Grace and peace, Brother Sean here from the Zion Assembly of God with some true talks with another lesson. I want to give all praise to our father Jah and his son Joshua the Messiah of Nazareth who died for our sins, who's also known in the world as Yahshua, Yahawashai, Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua the Christ, the Anointed. As you know, there are many people that have various understandings of the Most High's name in the world, and I don't want to cause any other confusions, but just know that if you're using the King James Bible, and you understand the Most High's name and the Son's name, that you're living to the commandments and the testimony of the Messiah. Now this is another revelation of Jah's calendar. This book was put out in the year 2000 by David Ray, which reveals the Most High's calendar, along with his other wonderful books, which we show on our channel and our website. But let's get into this. This series is called Repairing the Sabbath Breach. Is it 12 hours or 24 hours? And we're going to look at Exodus chapter 16 in particular in this lesson here today. I'm going to be making a couple of more videos on this topic here. So I don't want anybody to get bent out of shape and start sending me definitions of yam and day. We're going to go through this first and tackle it. Now, there's many other aspects to this topic. And if you don't know about it already, let me just say it quickly. There are many people in the world that believe that the Sabbath day should only be 12 hours and there are many that believe it's supposed to be 24 hours. And the beginning sometimes is a problem as well. But let's just go to a verse here that is mostly used by many of people who want to defend a 12 hour Sabbath. John 11 verses 9 and 10. Joshua, Yahshua, Yahawashai, Jesus, the Messiah answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. So from here, in this aspect, believe it or not, it's really taken out of context here. But it says, are there not 12 hours in the day? So the understanding is that, hey, look, isn't there 12 hours in the day? The Messiah said it. So when we're talking about a day, it should only be 12 hours. There's no mentioning of 24 hours or anything like that. But I mean, if we just use our wisdom, if you're going to say that the 12 hours, there's only 12 hours in the day, that means, you know, even when the sun rises, you're going to have to still wait another 24 hours till the sun rises again. And you're going to have to go through a night period. But what I notice is a lot of people, they forget about the next verse. It reads, But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Now right off the bat, we can see in context, the Messiah wasn't really trying to teach us about hours of the day, but he was using this as symbolism. And what we can see here clearly is that if there's 12 hours in the day, he mentions the night in verse 10. So obviously your mind should be saying, hey, there's 12 hours in the night. So again, using your wisdom, we should also know that there are 24 hours in a day. Now how this looks is just like this. Basically, it's a 12-hour Sabbath. It's a 12-hour Sabbath only. And so Saturday morning at sunrise or 6 a.m. until the evening time, 6 p.m. or sunset, the Sabbath is celebrated. The night before and the night after are not observed as a part of the Holy Sabbath. But what I'm going to be talking about today is the 24-hour Sabbath and how it relates to the truth. So I just want you to understand that I believe that the 24-hour Sabbath is from evening till evening, basically, or evening and morning, which it includes from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say to you, you know what, hey, that's some Jewish traditions and understandings and you're following traditions of men that way. This is not what the scripture says. But truthfully, as you might see throughout most of our lessons, we use the scriptures. And even though some heathens out there might have the same things and do the same things because they're reading from the same book as well. It doesn't mean that you're grabbing things from them. We all have our understanding and we can read for ourselves. So let's get into this. I'm professing that the original day from creation, and I made a video on this already. It's my last video. Hopefully, maybe I'll put the card up here. You can click on the card or watch it at the end of this video about the original day from Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. I quoted it, we spoke about it very clearly. And when you got all the words out of Genesis chapter one, verse five, just like you see on your screen, you have all of these words are found within those verses right there. You'll find that there's 12 hours 
and 12 hours of darkness and light, giving you 24 hours. All the words you'll see are darkness, night, and evening. And remember, this is in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, the very first day of creation, of which all other days are the pattern of. And then we see there's light, day, and there's also morning. So these things are important. And when we read, you know, that Genesis episode, and I'm not going to quote it right now because I've already gone through it, we see that there was in the beginning, it was darkness. You can equivalent that with night and the evening. And Mosai said, let there be light. And he called light from darkness. And he separated them. But the thing is, a lot of people don't see very clearly is that the Most High was working in darkness. If you read verses 1 through 2, you'll see that that's the Most High working. He was creating, he was moving above the waters, creating his heaven. And then in verse 3, he says, let there be light. So there's a great time period, I would say clearly 12 hours of darkness before the Most High even said, let there be light, just to even go with those scriptures that are found in John chapter 11. Nonetheless, I want to read a couple of little um, references that might be of some value to this topic. Remember, the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, you can look up this, you know, um, this text link here, this hyperlink yourself here, and it reads, When evening and morning is used in conjunction with the word day, i.e. and the evening and the morning were the first day, it means the day is a 24-hour day, a solar day, or one revolution of the earth. Now, I don't believe the earth moves at all, but this is a straight quote, so you understand where he's coming from. The two words morning and evening are combined with yum 19 times each outside of Genesis chapter 1. Three times these words share the same reference. Numbers 15, Deuteronomy 16, and Daniel 8. And with each occurrence, a 24-hour day is signified. This is true no matter what the literary genre or context might be. It should be further observed that when morning and evening occur together with Yom, this happens 38 times outside of Genesis chapter 1, 25 of the 38 occur in historical native, it always, without exception, designates a literal solar day or 24 hours. So any combination of the words morning and evening and yam use their extra linguistic referential value to its fullest extent, pointing to the length of time which is normally associated with these words. The terms evening and morning are never used figuratively in the Old Testament. They always describe a 24-hour period. Now again, this is just a reference, but the wording of it is very, very true. This is how it really goes when it comes to the Most High's 24-hour days and people forget about the dates. So when we just look at creation very clearly, we see that if you look at day one, there was darkness first, that was called the night, then you had the morning, and it's called the light. And then this pattern repeats itself seven times, right? See, in this creation week, it's very, very clear. So when you get to the seventh day, the sixth day ends. It says, And Jah saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we look at when the evening and the morning were the sixth day, every day saying the same thing, evening and morning, evening and morning, evening and morning. When the sixth day ends, it's ending when there's at the evening, the nighttime, when the daylight season is over and beginning the seventh day in the nighttime. So what's the big, you know, to do about that or the misunderstanding? And I think the problem is, is because each of the six days, it says evening and the morning. But some people say that, you know, when it comes to the seventh day, he doesn't say evening and morning. And th that kind of is like weird to me. It's almost like... All right, if you were to ask any child or person, and you said the evening and the morning were the first day, and to follow this pattern, and you say evening and morning, second day, and then if you got to, you know, number six, and you said the evening and the morning were the sixth day, and, you know, you know there's seven days in the week, what would you say about the next day, right? You can only say the evening and the morning, but because people don't see the words evening and the morning there, it kind of raffles their brain, and it, well, I guess, who knows what it means? It must only mean the light time, the daytime. So again, that's a lot of surmising there when clearly we can see that there is a scriptural pattern. 
But I want to just move on from that because even though I feel like this is enough information to show a 24 hour Sabbath, let's get into the topic at hand. We're looking at Exodus chapter 16 and the Sabbath day. Now this issue of the 12 hour Sabbath versus the 24 hour Sabbath, Exodus 16 seems to be one of those uh, type of uh, chapters or areas of this topic where a lot of people feel, hey, this is where it's at. If you can't see it here, then you can't see it. And most people who believe in a 12 hour Sabbath, they will use this chapter a lot. So what I wanna do with this chapter is just give it a clean read. And you know when I say clean read, we're just going to read the chapter, we'll stop, we'll break things down, but basically we'll stay within the context of the chapter and see what the Most High can reveal to us as we're reading. So we're looking at Exodus 16 and the Sabbath. Now like I said, regarding the manna issue here in Exodus 16, people use this to say that the nighttime is not a part of the Sabbath due to this chapter. Now. I've been saying it a lot, but there are many scriptural pieces of evidence for you to research yourself regarding the Sabbath, of which I'll cover in this series. So let's get a clean read of this important event and get an understanding of the Sabbath. Exodus 16.1 And they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Now I have to emphasize this part here because this is a chronicle of the, the children of Israel's journey. So what you're going to be reading now as it's opening up with this, these are the events that are occurring on this journey. They're coming in from the wilderness. You know they travel by day. So now night is coming upon them and they're getting ready to settle in. And right, that settling in there is the ending of a day and the beginning of a new day, beginning with the evening time, and it's the 15th day of the second month. Verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Then said John to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So when we look at this here, you know, people say, all right, you've got a certain rate every day. He said he's going to rain bread from heaven for them. And then they're going to go, go out and look at the wording clearly. It says, gather a certain rate every day. That's going to stand out to you a lot in this reading. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So again, every day they're going to get something, and then on the sixth day they're going to get twice as much because the Sabbath is being taught here. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel, At evening, then you shall know that Jah hath brought you out of the land of Egypt. So now again, focusing on things here, we're now talking about at evening, in the nighttime, because this is when they're coming in. And remember, the evening is the ending of one day, and as it's turning night, it's synonymous. So it's basically saying, in the night, you're going to know, in that evening. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of Jah, for that he, hath, he heareth your murmurings against Jah, and what are we that you murmur against us? So notice here, we got here an evening and a morning. Very unique way to look at this. We're on the 15th day, right, of the second month. And we're talking about this evening and the morning. Very clear. And Moses said, This shall be when Joshua shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that Jah heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Jah. So once again, beautifully seen here clearly, we see that evening and morning are mentioned twice. And it's regarding this 15th day. And even when you understand this word yum, as it's translated from the word day, anytime it's dealing with a number, it's always, without a doubt, referring to a 24 hour period because it's referring to a date. And it should be understood that dates are very important in the scripture. And that's going to be one of the other lessons I'm going to do to make it even stand out clearly. Dates are 24 hour periods. Let's continue. 
So we see here that we're on the 15th day of the second month. And again, we're teaching, it's coming in the evening, believing in a 24 hour day from the evening to the morning. So they're coming in at the evening at the bottom, as they settling in, and then in this nighttime period here between, you know, the, probably the first couple of two, three hours, maybe even sooner, we see that there's going to be something happening in the night and something happening in the morning. But again, look at how you have your 12 hour night and you have your 12 hour light or your 12 hour day. So again, we're focusing on this 15th day of the second month. And when we look at it on a calendar, the most highest calendar, we can see here in the third row, the 15th, that's when we're going to have the quails coming and the manna within that 24 hour period. And we have our scripture. And then as we go along and we move along, we can see that on the 20th or six days later, they're going to get double manna. And then on the Sabbath day, the 21st, they get no manna. So on the 15th is when the manna began to fall. And this is actually the Passover of the second month. Because if you read Numbers 9-11, that's when they sacrificed the Passover of the second month. And then they eat it on the evening of the 15th. This is why the Most High's, you know, festivals and understandings have, have great, great deep meanings. But nonetheless, I want you just to be able to, to focus and see these dates. Let's get back to the read. Exodus 16. And Moses spake unto Aaron, say, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Jah appeared in the cloud. And Jah spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. And ye shall know that I am Yah, your Elohim. So again, look at what we got here. We got the evening. They're going to eat flesh. And that's actually the Passover of the second, uh, second month. And in the morning, they're going to have the bread. We're talking about a clear 24-hour period that's going to be uh, shown here, night and day, evening and morning. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. So we see again, quails at the evening time, the night time, and in the morning time there was dew all around the place. And when the dew that lay was gone up, evaporated, Behold, the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. So everywhere there was this small manna, this hoar looking like hoarfrost, and we'll talk about that in a second, covering everywhere. Almost like this thing of snow and frost. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one, one to another, It is manna. For they wist not, or they didn't know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Most High hath given you to eat. So again, focusing on, we have the evening and the morning. It's very clear. And let's look at this now on our, on our date. So this is the 15th day of Ziph, which is the second month. The quails come in that night. The manna comes in the morning. It's beautiful. It works out perfectly. And then they get the manna. And we'll talk a little bit more as we move along. But let's look at this. The hoarfrost. And what you see in front of you is actually uh, a type of hoarfrost. It wasn't like it was snowing in this area. And you can look up hoarfrost yourself. It's quite a phenomenon. It's when it kind of do freezes um, in a certain sense. Especially when it's coming on onto the changing of the seasons towards winter. But it's frost that freezes. And it just looks very small and it covers everything. So could you imagine what the children of Israel saw in the wilderness? Something that was white. They probably didn't know what snow was. I'm not sure. But it wasn't like cold or anything like that. Again, taking a look. This is a close-up of horror frost. Giving us a little bit of an understanding. And you know, when you're looking at this here, I look at numbers and we get a little bit information more about this um, this manna here. Let's go to numbers. Numbers 11. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedelium. 
and the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. So we get an understanding here of how the people handled it, almost like it was like flour basically or grain. It was like a grain from heaven. And I think in the scripture somewhere else, don't know that scripture, but I know others know of it, that it says that the children of Israel were eating angels food, right? The bread of angels. But here's something I want you to focus on. Verse 9, it reads, And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the man manna fell upon it wow so what is that saying here this is giving us a good understanding of what's going on the most high because if you know anything about dew and you can look it up yourself it occurs during the night time and this when the sun comes up that's when the dew starts to disappear but it comes on in the night time and it, it's something it's like a cloud coming upon the earth and it shows you here that the manna fell upon it so this is happening in the nighttime. The Most High is giving his people in the nighttime. But let's take a look, look back at, again at this manna. It's like coriander seed and bedillium stone, which is a, a type of gummy resin. So you can see here how, you know, the manna could, again, looking like frost. And I got this from this website here, zion.org. Even a more up-close look again just kind of want to put something in your mind and understanding but now let's take a look at this again let's look at the events it's the 15th day of the second month the quails come in the night man is in the morning and the manna falls in the night that's right and this is also the first day of the week on the weekly cycle obviously because he's teaching them how to keep the sabbath and that's one good reason to know how the 15th day of the second month does start on the first day of the week. Don't forget that the manna melts also by midday. That's when the sun comes upon it, it will melt. Continue in Exodus 16, verse 16. This is the thing which Jad commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it, or measure it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. So this here is according to like a, it's like a miracle of the Most High. He's allowing them to, doesn't matter what they gather, what they feel that they gather, it's going to be the perfect amount for them. And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. So they were gathering in the day, they would eat some of it in the day, and obviously in the nighttime, they would cook it up again as a meal, and they would eat it in the nighttime. And they could eat it all up until 3 o'clock, what you'd call 3 o'clock in the morning, or the ninth hour of the night. As long as they never left any of it, but as long as they ate it in that evening. So this food that they were given in the daytime also fed them in the night. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. As always, there's going to be some of us being stubborn, right? But that some of us being stubborn sometimes can reflect on all of us as a people. We've seen many times in scripture where the Most High has punished the nation for the wrongdoing of just a, two or three people. So again, they said some of them, they left it to the morning, they, they didn't hearken. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. So again, by the time, you know, for sure, even probably before midday, you know, this thing is melting away and they have, have no more access for it. So they'd have to collect most of it and gather it and harvest it for the first early morning hours. Let's continue. Verse 22. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread two omers for one man and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses and he said unto them this is that which Jad said tomorrow is the rest of the holy sabbath unto Jah bake that which you will bake today and seed that which you will seed and that which remains over lay up for you 
to be kept until the morning. So he's telling them they can keep this, you know, because they got double. They can eat whatever they want, do what they want, and whatever they leave over, because they can leave it over, they'll have it for the morning. And remember, the Most High is trying to teach his people something here. He feeds them every day. And this is why he said, you know, don't leave none of it to the morning. Don't try to be greedy and think, hey, I'm going to save some for tomorrow, as some of them did, and it stank, right? No. We trust in Jah that he'll give us every single day our daily bread. But now with the focus here, it says tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto Jah. So right there, you know, some people say, well, he's saying tomorrow. Well, we know it means the next day. And just like this word tomorrow and day and yom is used, it has its contextual, simple contextual understanding in it. Tomorrow is going to be basically, you know, the next day from where they are. Some people want to say, well, why didn't he say tonight? Well, the next day officially does begin in the night because we know that days finish as doesn't matter what you want to follow 12 hours or 24 hours they'll say it finishes at sundown or at the evening time but he's just letting them know tomorrow they're not going to get any of this manna here it's part of the sabbath let's continue verse 24 and they laid it up till the morning as moses bade and it did not stink neither was there any worm in it worm therein and so again they laid it up and I think, you know, somebody did some studies where if you look at this term laid it up, it just means they put it to rest, right? So they did their thing. They rested that evening. And Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto Jah. Today you shall not find it in the field. So again, I could see if your mind is focused on saying, well, it's only 12 hours. But he's talking about that daylight time for when the Sabbath does manna, uh, the manna falls, right? On that daylight time and remember the most high gives the manna in the night time with the dew so the most high is holding back in the night time and they're not gathering in the daytime again that evening and morning thing is right there but yes he's talking about them yes that daylight part you know they're not gonna as you can see in context you shall not find it in the field but the night before was a sabbath as well the children of israel knew this people knew this this isn't something like you know, it's just that I can understand how this confusion comes into play. But let's continue. It says, Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in there in it there shall be none. That's right, they gathered it in the daytime. They never gathered it in the nighttime, but they ate it in the nighttime and they couldn't leave it to the morning. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather, and they found none. Again, People doing what they want to do, trying to figure it out themselves. And Jah said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that Jah hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So when he says he gave them bread for two days, he didn't just give them bread for two daylights. He gave them bread for two whole days, the full six days. They're going to eat it in the night. And then on the Sabbath, they're going to get none. And they're going to have some of that and eat it in the night as well. And then on the first day um, in the morning, they're going to have, again, more manna coming for them. Very clear. So the people rested on the seventh day. Yes, they didn't go out on that daylight part to get it they understood that so keeping everything in context is very clear now let me just chart this for you exodus 16 and the manna in the sixth second month so remember we spoke about how it's the 15th day right it goes to the 21st we have exodus 16 it's saying and moses said this shall be when josh shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full your evening and morning talk comes so they get the flesh we also learned that in verses numbers 11 verse 9 and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night the manna fell upon it so we learned that the manna comes in the nighttime as well and then it's reaped or gathered in the daylight and so we see this pattern going through and as we watch this pattern going through to the sixth day he gives them double manna in the nighttime and double manna is reaped by them and then for the sabbath day no manna falls for the do no and there's no gathering of the manna because there's no manna there again for that 24 hour period so it's very clear to see that 
you know even though you want to read this and I guess if you kind of want to look over all the other verses in the scriptures and whatnot that show clearly how the Sabbath day is 24 hours and I promise you I will be doing one just after this one is almost finished you know I don't think this is a very strong argument that way and so again it is what it is and uh, hopefully you've gotten some understanding that you know, this simple read of Exodus chapter 16, a clean read, doesn't show or teach that the seventh day Sabbath is 12 hours. It doesn't teach that or show that. It's just if you don't read it with a context and an understanding, you'll only focus on the daylight parts. And remember, this word day, you can use it as focusing on the, the daytime, the daylight. So, you know, yeah, we'll talk about yum and what it means in another time and your mom. That's another word that deals with the daylight another time. Let's finish with a nice strong verse. Judith 8 verse 6 it reads, and this is from the Apocrypha. And she, Judith, fasted all the days of her widowhood, except the eves or the evenings of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths, and the evenings of the new months and the new months, and the feasts and solemn days of the house of Israel. So this is from the Apocrypha the 1611. And what you see here is an exact screenshot of it. I'm pretty sure many people can check it out and verify it yourself. As you can see, it says the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths. It even goes on to say the eaves of the new months. Days begin in the evening. That is simply how it goes. Now, for those who don't want to accept the Apocrypha, no problem. But this, those who do, this is a very, very powerful verse. Couldn't say it much clearer myself. So again, I hope you got some understanding. We've just covered repairing the Sabbath and showing that the Sabbath is 24 hours from Exodus chapter 16 as well. I don't believe it's showing anything about a 12-hour Sabbath. So bless up, one love, and all praise to the Most High Jah and His Son Joshua, our Savior. Peace.